Okay, so welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some real stats from books that have been published into the early education niche uh, by myself. We'll take a look at the two books that the 707 sales have come from over the course of the year. So the reason that I want to make this video is because at the moment, obviously, everyone's talking again about early education, including myself. So I wanted to give an absolutely realistic perspective in terms of what I think you can achieve when you enter into this niche as an independent publisher. So what we're going to do in this video, we'll take a look at some of the results from the books that I've had published. We'll take a look at those actual books and how they're doing on Amazon. From there, we'll take a look at the pitfalls that I've encountered during the last the, during the last year from publishing in this niche. And then we'll take a look at the benefits as well. So moving on from there, we'll take a look at how we're going to be growing one of these brand of books. So what we're going to be doing is creating five new books. I'm going to be showing them on this channel quite soon. So you can take a look at to see the direction that I take with these books. And from there, we're going to take a look at a new way to rank books without advertising spend. So um, before you get too excited, this is a very long term pursuit, but it is incredible. And I do have results to back this up with as well. So we're going to talk about that. And throughout this video, we're going to be taking a look at the measurement worksheet generator software as we're going to be using that for the books that we're going to publish for this brand and also talk about some of the exciting updates that have just happened today. And if you watched, I'm sorry, if you read my email yesterday, you know that there's been some pretty big additions to the software. Going to take a look at that and even more additions that are coming to this version of the software as well. So let's get into this video now and take a look at the books now. So just coming over to my account here, we can see the 707 sales in the past year. So the reason that I wanted to show the, the not so impressive stats for these books is because I do think it is a realistic look at the type of sales that you can expect to, to make when you enter into a new niche for the first time. So the two books that we have here, are an addition and subtraction workbook. So you've probably seen this on my channel a few times before. That's amounted 608 sales and a preschool workbook, which has just been uploaded around a month ago, which has 99 sales to it at the moment. So what I'm going to look at doing is to add to the preschool workbook here, the pen name for that one. You're going to be adding the new books to this pen name okay and also one thing to note here and we touched upon this in the case studies for both of these books the advertising um, cost and the amount of sales that we got from ads so the addition and subtraction workbook initially we had maybe between 50 and 70 sales from advertising campaigns and then we kind of slowly reduced the advertising campaigns and let the book do its thing so we'll take a look at it on Amazon in just a second, what it looks like without many ads being run to it. The preschool workbook has around, I think it's 50 to 60% of them have come from advertising campaigns at the moment. We're still reducing that. Um, but with this one at the moment, because it's only been a month, it's only a month old, we're probably looking at just losing some money with this book. But we're going to talk about why that doesn't really matter when we take a look at the benefits to entering into this niche. So let's take a look at the niche pitfalls and benefits to entering into early education on Amazon. So this is going to be the information from just two books across one year's worth of sales and feedback and looking into various apps and curriculums etc etc so some of the things that i found quite hard and again um, relating to curriculum in particular is that i found it hard to structure the books to target to whatever grade that i was going after correctly so knowing how many pages that i should have in one of my books how difficult the those pages and activities need to be which activities i need to pair together or what i didn't need to pair together and making sure that i actually targeted the correct age for the correct grade because sometimes you're going to have this scenario where there's kind of like some wiggle room in terms of how old the child is going to be versus the grade that they're actually in because some child some children are going to be a little bit behind and some are going to be a little bit ahead. Okay, so I personally struggle with that. But again, I think it's the same with any niche that you enter into. You have to produce multiple books, not just two, not just three, but we're talking five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is one of the reasons that I'm getting back into this now that I feel a bit more comfortable and publishing more books. So for example, to use the addition and subtraction workbook as an example, so I went overkill and we went with 160 pages of 
um, equations here. So what happened obviously not too long ago was that Amazon changed the printing prices of their books and having 160 pages for an 8.5 by 11 book, it, mean, it meant that I had to up the price to 977 from what was 699, I think at the time, which makes it um, less desirable in the marketplace. Granted, it is still making sales, but just things like that, I kind of didn't realize at the time that I didn't necessarily need to have um, 160 different pages. And the same goes for the preschool workbook. When I was making this, I was thinking to myself, is do I need to have solutions at the back of my book for such a young audience? And if you have solutions taking up pages inside of your book, then that's going to increase the, the cost of the, the production of your book, meaning that your royalties are going to go down. So, so for a preschool workbook where the ages are three to five, where parents are typically going to be helping the child with their book, you don't need to have the solutions at the back. And it's just things like that, that I didn't even realize that I, I, I needed to know in terms to make in order to make a good book in this niche. And also, it's not just that, it's the fact that you need to know these things because the people that you're going to be competing against, the better books, the people that have got good reviews, they will have already known this. So for example, if I put solutions into the back of this book and took up another 30 pages and therefore had to increase the price, then we're gonna look at going up to, again, we're gonna go up to like 9.99 and while all the other books are gonna be 6.99 and 7.99, we're gonna price ourselves out of the marketplace. Now, it made sense to do that on the addition and subtraction workbook because those type of equations can be uh, condensed really small and then put into maybe two or three four or five pages at the back of the book so yeah i guess i'm just stupid but that's one of the pitfalls that i found um, entering into early education so broad targeting was something again that probably wasn't the smartest thing for me to do so the preschool workbook that we did as a case study last month i went incredibly bored incredibly ambitious just tried to target a very generic preschool workbook and to show you what happened here and you need to take this into consideration for any book that you publish is that if we target something extremely broad so there's a difference between extremely broad and being able to enter into competitive niches so targeting extremely broad means that i went after the keyword terms preschool workbook so what happened here is that if we scroll down the first page which is where you want to be for your books we're going to find that uh, we have a listing an advertising listing going here still but what we found is that the actual organic ranking for this book is now on somewhere on page two i believe yeah we're here on page two so what would happen in order for you to for a broad for a broad positioning of your book in order to stay ranked for that you're going to have to spend a lot of money and this is something that i think people get so wrong when it comes to publishing books is that they target broad thinking that that means that they're getting into competitive niches when it just means really that they're going to have a real hard time getting ranked for certain keywords that's exactly what happened to me with this book i found that it was taking way too long too much money to get my book ranked onto the first page and it just wasn't worth it so luckily given the way that we also the other keyword terms that we were targeting we're also ranked for some good search terms here like preschool math workbook okay so again just because we didn't get ranked for the broad term we did actually get ranked for other search terms as well so the next pitfall is that the sales drop during q4 so just to go over to one of my books and show off the historic data of how this is working and i think really this makes sense like i'm not sure who wants to buy an addition and subtraction workbook for their child for christmas i could be wrong but i i don't think that's the most appealing gift ever but what, what we'll take a look at here is that if we go to this bsr chart where we can see the ranking for our book in the past so what happened was as we released the book during um january February, march april may june july the book started selling well and then come october pretty much bang on october the start of q4 things started to absolutely suck and then we got to the point in december obviously uh, rank a million so this is last year the book isn't selling at all and then come january we have this big nice drop mid january and we go all the way that back down and we start selling for this nice consistent period again then we get back 
to Q4 here again. And as you can see, the ranking goes up again toward a million. And that kind of makes sense. The books aren't necessarily seasonal, but they certainly have seasonal spikes. So what we'll expect to find in January is that the BSR goes back down to, let's say, hopefully consistently under 150,000, if I had to guess. So actually, this doesn't matter to me when it comes to releasing books. I'm going to release the, the five um, books in this series. I'm going to release the series. I'm going to release them for those January sales. So I'm not going to fret over whether the advertising costs are going to be too high for Q4, whether people are even buying them. I'm going to be releasing these books as and when. And I tend to preach that um, is that you just, if your book is ready, just release it unless it makes, unless you're releasing a Halloween book on November the 1st, then obviously you wouldn't do that. But when it comes to books like these, just go ahead, release them, focus on getting them ranked. And then during um, the periods where they do spike, then you're going to start seeing more sales. So moving on to the benefits of entering into early education. So it's going to be less competitive in general. And I will put this out there and say that every niche at this point in 2023 and 2024 and beyond is going to be competitive. But in general, would say that these books are less competitive than things like activity books and coloring books and notebooks and journals, which means that when it comes to ranking your book, you can actually spend less money to get that rank. So just using the preschool workbook as an example. So even though we spent what I think was over the course of maybe seven or eight weeks, we spent, I think, just over $200 on the advertising cost for this book. We managed to get ranked on the first page for the search term preschool math workbook, which again is, it's a little bit niche down than preschool workbook, but it's still very, very competitive. But I think it's quite telling that we even managed to get the book ranked on the first page. Um, it does actually come back onto the first page every now and then for the broad term preschool workbook. So I think it is quite telling that these books are easier to rank. And again, if you're going to be a bit more specific, so addition and subtraction workbook, for example, for grade two, that's quite niche down. Of course, it's still in a niche that has a lot of demand. It means it meant that for this book, I think maybe we spent 50 to $60 in order to get that ranked. And then no matter what happens after the ranking period, no matter, no matter which money, how much money we spent during the ranking period, we look at reducing the ads and just leaving those books ranked. Okay. So you can see, for example, the addition and subtraction workbook, even though it was published um, way over a year now, we can see that we're still ranked even at a higher price point. We're still ranked on the first page just to uh, just due to the level of competition being less. So one of the other benefits here of entering into early education is that there are going to be lots of grades to target. So it's not a case of you have to target grade two. Every child is going to have to go from kindergarten to grade one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. So you're going to see the structure of the books that I'm producing in the series coming up in the next section. But not only are there lots of grades to target, but also you can target the different activities, make your book very broad if you want to. You can make your book into an activity book or you can position it as a workbook. You can mix and match to offer the audience something new, but you have to really focus on the audience that you're going to be targeting and getting your books ranked for the appropriate search terms. Okay, so all of that is going to be covered in the case study that I do for the series of books that I'm releasing. We'll talk about that a little bit toward the end of the video. But another benefit here, and this is something that I found for both of these books. So the additions attraction workbook, um, we actually hired someone for Fiverr, I think for maybe $20 to do the cover for that. And then the preschool workbook, um, I did this myself in Canva just by utilizing some of the elements from inside the book and some of the assets that I had. And that's why that book doesn't look particularly good. But I think if you can, if you can create, if you're entering into a niche where book covers don't need to be spectacularly beautiful like a lot of the early education workbooks they don't look beautiful in terms of how complex they are if you can learn how to do those book covers yourself then you're going to save yourself a ton of money now if you're entering into something like a coloring book niche or an activity book niche where the book covers are typically very very beautiful then yes i think you unless you can do that yourself then that's something that needs to be outsourced but with these books, the book cover costs are going to be quite low because they don't really need to be anything particularly beautiful. They need to work within the niche. They have to be niche appropriate, but they don't have to be absolutely stunning, in my opinion. And what I will say is that if Chris can make a book cover that has 100 sales to it, then I think pretty much anyone can. And also what you'll find is that 
if you're creating like a brand or a series of books in early education, you can kind of keep the same template for the books and then just adjust them according to the grade and the activities inside. So I've not done that with mine because I've used two different pen names. But what I'll do going forward with my series of books is to try and keep this same format or to change this book over here and keep it consistent with the books that I add into it as well. Okay, so moving on to growing your brand or continuing to build on your brand and making more sales, making more money through KDP, you have to publish more books. I know people say to focus on your quality over your quantity, but you have to, especially if you're going to produce things like quite niche down early education books, which is what I'm going to be doing, you have to publish more books. Okay. So just moving into this section now, the goal and like the dream of what I want to do here is to kind of have all these books working together. And you're going to see in the next section, something um, pretty beautiful that is going to help this. So what I want to happen is to have all these books linked together, working together, um, A plus content with all the cool little things that show off all the other books that you're selling as well. Um, I'm going to go into that in the case study, not for this video, but these are the, this is the outline of the books that I'm looking to create in these series. So the reason that we're creating this case study is so that you can actually see what it's going to take, what it's going to be like to publish in this niche and to publish a series in this niche. So what we're looking at doing is creating kind of a kindergarten activity book. We're going to be then creating an activity book using some of the modules from some of the new modules from inside the measurement worksheet generator app. So if you got my email uh, yesterday, I think it would be at the time of recording this. If you got my email, I mentioned that the OTO number two for the measurement worksheet generator app has been already massively updated. So just to show you what that is, and these are going to be what's going to go into many parts of the books I'm publishing, as you're going to be able to see what's going to go into that are going to be these kind of programmed illustrations as they call them. So inside OTO number two, what has been updated at the moment is that we have now 48 more templates to work with, with the measuring temperature programmed illustrations. So for me, this is something exciting. This is something that I am going to 100% 100% going to be using inside of the books I'm creating. What we have here are more designs and more layouts that we can work with. And this is great because the, the more that we have, the more variety that we can introduce into our books, the more unique they become and the more angles that we can take with our unique selling points for our books. Okay. So if you're interested in this, I'm just going to go through a couple of the new designs so you can see what they look like. I'm just going to add some of these in here now and just play around with them so you can see the kind of quality that you're going to be working with for your books as well. So just a couple more of the designs. So we have different um, programmed illustrations and we also have different variations of them as well. So again, giving a ton of variety for the pages that you can create. So if we just zoom in on one of these here and since a few people have asked me what the programmed illustrations actually are. So if we come over and just click on one of these as an example. So the, what the appeal of this is, is that if you're going to have these type of images created, you have the, the flexibility in terms of what data is being presented. So if we come up to the regenerate data option here, if you watch the mercury levels inside of the thermometer, you'll see that they're going to be changing as we regenerate the data. So it's going to be a case of whether you would want to have something like this inside your book. Obviously, I'm going to be using it for the books I'm creating in the case study. It's a, also a case of could you hire someone to create these illustrations for you? The answer is yes, but when it comes to weighing up whether this is worth the time, whether it's worth the cost when you have something like an application like this that is actively doing it for you and you have full control over, then you'd have to weigh up whether, again, whether that's worth it for you or not in terms of saving time and ultimately saving money. So like I say, there's a ton of variety that's being added here. And I'm not going to go over all of this in this video, but I just wanted to showcase some of these because we have had a few questions regarding these programmed illustrations. So just one other thing as well, since a few people were confused as to what's happening with this OTO number two massive special offer um, that I am actually recommending to people. So if we come back to the other 
um, things, the program illustrations that are being added as well. So the measuring capacity, if I just add these in here to jog your memory. So just like the measuring temperature section here, there's going to be a ton of different illustrations. So you get things probably like beakers um, and variations of that, just like the previous section, a ton of them are going to be added as well. Same for the measuring mass section as well. There's going to be a ton, um, a ton more added to this. So different illustrations that you can work with. So you're going to have things like scales where you're going to be able to have the object on top of the scales. It can be your own predefined object. So if you have assets that you work with or you do illustrations yourself, you can put them into the app and place them on the scales or whatever the, um, the mass measuring component is. You can do that. It's going to be a ton of variety. Obviously, it's not been updated yet, but that is coming to this software as well. So on top of that, OTO number two is going to have two more of these programmed illustration sections added to them. So that's going to be measuring length. So one assumes rulers, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, and um, another section for more or less. So there's a ton more coming to OTO number two. And just to clear up some of the confusion with this whole OTO number two thing. So what will happen after the launch period? So between the 3rd of November and the 6th of November, what's going to happen is that these five so these five sections one two three and then the two that are missing at the moment these five sections they're going to be removed from the app completely after the launch period and then sold as individual products next year whereas during this launch period if you decide to get it now you're going to get them all right now and every update that comes with it in future when they get that actual release so that's one of the reasons why i am recommending this to my audience because i i do genuinely believe that this offer is their absolute best so those are some of the activities that we're going to be putting into the, the books for the case study so from there we'll probably make a book that's going to be dedicated to us conversion maybe a book going to be dedicated to converting between us standards and international standards and vice versa then book five is possibly going to be a mixture of pages from the app that you've just seen, the measurement worksheet generator and some other activities as well. So that's all going to be shown off in the case study, how it's all put together. So moving on, and this is something, this is something that people talk about a ton, but I've never seen anyone actually have any results. Now, this, a new way to rank books, like I say, is something people talk about a lot, but I've never seen, and I've actively been doing this myself. It's a long-term pursuit, but let's talk about that now and how that works together with the books that we're creating for this case study. So this is it. This is building an email list and then promoting to that email list when you produce a new book. So what I'd love to say that I've done this for the, the case study books, but they've not even, they're not even published yet. So that's not the case, but we will be looking at introducing the theory of this method into those books so you can see how it's done. So what happened over the course of the last sort of year after I've been building up my coloring book brand is that I've been slowly capturing people's emails from my books. Okay. So once the, and so what's happened is that at the end of the books, I'm offering a free digital download for people to go over to a website. They go to the website, they put in their email address, they download the free thing, and then I get their, their email address that I can then promote future. So I've been slowly building this, but I've never actually promoted my book to them until last week. I did it for the first time ever, and the results have been very, very nice. So the list that I've built up has been, I think it's 280 people that I have on this, this email list. So, you know, I hope you know what I mean by an email list. So if you get an email from me ever, it's because you've got something from me, which means you go onto my email list, you can unsubscribe from it. But when I send out an email, you receive that email. And that's how that works. Okay. It sends out in bulk to everyone the same email. And that's what's happening here with these books. Okay. I've captured all these emails. And then when a new book gets launched, what happened last uh, a couple of weeks ago, whenever I did it, I released this new book and I emailed saying, Hey, I've got a new book for my brand. This the new book has come out. And then people went to that link from the email that I sent. They purchased the book and that book got ranked onto the first onto the first page for a competitive search term within, I think it was within two days. And that's obviously without any advertising campaign spend. So that's absolutely incredible. Now, I don't want to hype people up and say, you can just go and do that. This is serious brand building business. It takes time. It's going to take six months. It's going to take a year. It depends how you optimize your, your website and your capture phone. Mine on mine, 
are absolutely shit. So my my conversions for collecting collecting emails from my coloring book brand are terrible because the I don't know what I'm doing. But the theory is there. I've done it. So for perspective, over the last sort of couple of years, it's taken thousands of sales to gather an email list of 270 people. Now, when I emailed out to them, I believe if I had to, to guess from my dashboard, there's 10 sales to that book within a day, which means a lot of people because there's no organic ranking, there's no ads being run to the book, which means those people must have purchased it from the email. Okay, so it's pretty incredible. It's pretty powerful. I am possibly going to be setting this up for the case study, um, the case study stuff that I'm going to be doing. So if you're interested in seeing how this has been done and you want that to be included in the case study, make sure that you leave a comment on this video because otherwise I'm not going to do it because it's going to take a lot of time to create basically another sort of mini course on how I've managed to build this email list. Okay. So if you're interested in that, in the bonus, leave a comment and I'll look at doing that as an additional bonus to the, the bonus that I'm already offering. So with that in mind, the bonus that I'm offering for anyone that picks up the measurement works, he generated software from me during the launch period is going to be this full case study of those five books. And then I'll look at creating a mini course for the email list book ranking thing as well, if enough people show enough interest. Okay, so launch period between the 3rd of November and the, the 6th of November. If you wanna get those bonuses, you have to purchase the software during that period. Anyway, I can already feel someone typing that I talk too much and I need to end the video. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in another video probably tomorrow.